So as you all know by now, Elon Musk had his big interview yesterday with Donald Trump, and uh, predictably, it was a train wreck. Now, I don't think that anybody really expected it to work because the website just hasn't worked very well since Elon Musk took over. I mean, DeSantis's campaign launch last summer was an unmitigated disaster, but I feel like this was somehow worse, arguably. So it was scheduled to start at 5 p.m. PST and uh, nobody could get in. Most people were hit with this space unavailable message, myself included. And then some people were pointing out that you could get in using the mobile app. So I tried that, still wasn't able to get in. Finally, I try again and I was able to get in. But the problem is that after I managed to finally get in, nobody was talking. And I heard some papers shuffling briefly and someone mouth breathing loudly into the mic until they muted it, but no interview silence. So there was a significant delay because I think that the space just couldn't handle that much traffic. And knowing that this is a terrible look for the platform, Elon Musk decides to take to Twitter to lie about the problems that they're having, tweeting out, quote, there appears to be a massive DDoS attack on X, working on shutting it down. Worst case, we will proceed with a smaller number of live listeners and post the conversation later. But there was no DDoS attack. The website just wasn't functioning properly as everyone expected. But after a while, the interview finally got off the ground and both Elon Musk and Donald Trump were able to speak for two plus hours. And now the day after they're both celebrating it as a huge success while simultaneously whining about headlines, talking about the technical difficulties, which we'll get to in a moment. But there wasn't much substance in this conversation predictably and if you missed it you really didn't miss much you know it was essentially two dumb bitches telling each other exactly for two hours straight but to even call it an interview is a little bit too charitable because trump blabbed the entire time and barely let elon musk get a word in edgewise and whenever we did hear from elon musk he was basically just saying yeah like, I don't know how many times he said yeah but if somebody counted it i would argue it was probably at least above 50 and that's maybe a more conservative estimate. But, you know, everything that Trump was saying got no pushback whatsoever from Elon Musk, the interviewer. And to kind of show you what I mean, I want to play this clip from Jordan Uhl. He shared this when he was listening. And just, uh, just get a sense of how it went, because this, I think, is emblematic of how the whole thing went, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I mean, they just took him out back behind the shed and basically shot him. You know, oh, what they did him. with this guy. So, and I'm no yeah. fan of his. And he was a horrible president, the worst president in history. And one of the reasons he was so bad, first of all, the Israeli attack would have never happened. Russia would never have attacked Ukraine and we'd have no inflation. And we wouldn't have had the Afghanistan mess, if you think of it. Well, and we wouldn't have had Afghanistan. Yeah. But we think of well, it. We, yeah. we, we, you take a few of those events away and we have a different world. We would also have no, no, no inflation yeah. was caused by oil. Yeah. <laughs> Riveting conversation, gentlemen. Now, you might have noticed that Trump sounded a little bit off there, like his dentures weren't on properly almost. And I can assure you that it was so much worse at other times. Case in point. As I see you broke every record in the book with uh, so many millions of people. And that's an honor. We view that as an honor. And then uh, you do want silencing of certain voices. Usually those are voices that... But that's okay. That's the way I get treated, and I don't mind that at all. What I can tell you is this. It, we cannot have a Democrat. We cannot have her. She's incompetent. She's as bad as Biden it's, in a different... Yeah. Look, she hasn't done an interview I mean, since this whole yeah. uh, scam started. And, and say what you want. This yeah. was a coup. Yeah. So if I had to guess... I think that he was having a hard time getting his dentures to stick. It's happened to him before, but who knows? I mean, he sounded like he had a lisp. And because he sounded like that, people immediately started shitposting about it. And they were sharing images of Donald Trump like this, photoshopped with no teeth to kind of represent how he sounded to them, uh, saying, grab him by the pussy. <laughs> and I've got to say, I can't unsee that after hearing him sound that way. But you don't even have to use Photoshop to imagine him looking goofy during that interview because a photo was taken of him during the call. And uh, my guy was wearing the most massive shoulder pads I've ever seen in my entire life. So... <laughs> He looked as goofy as he sounded, but what he said made him seem so much more goofy. So there was a moment where he was talking about Kamala Harris on the cover of Time magazine, and he actually, believe it or not, says something nice about her. So 
he says something nice, but it's not just a nice compliment that he gives her. It's a little too nice to where it's creepy. So let me show you what I mean. And uh, actually, yeah. she looked very much like a great first lady, Melania. She looked... She looked, didn't look. Yeah. She didn't look like Camilla. That's right. But of course, she's a beautiful woman. So we'll leave it at that, right? I'm glad that he chose to just leave it at that because if he kept talking about how Kamala Harris reminds him of Melania, then I genuinely uh, would not want to have heard what he had to say. But you know, we've talked about some of the more goofy stuff, the technical difficulties. But I do want to dive into the substance because Trump did at least try to talk about policy, and since he's deeply unintelligent, that also didn't go well for him predictably. For example, listen to what he says about climate change. You know, the biggest threat is not global warming, where the ocean's gonna rise one one eighth of an inch over the next four hundred years. The big and you'll have more you'll have more ocean front property, right? The biggest threat is not that. The biggest threat is nuclear warming. I swear to God this man is a fucking idiot. While I agree that the threat of nuclear war is serious, climate change is already here right now. It's not a looming threat, it's happening right now. But to him, it just means that we'll have more oceanfront property. Yeah. Hey dipshit, what happens to the oceanfront property that we have now that will one day be underwater? See, this is what I don't get. So he's big on national security, right? So climate change is the biggest national security threat our country has ever faced because U.S. territory will literally be annexed by the ocean. And he's spitting that as a good thing. Imagine if Canada decided to just take over a couple of states. Washington is theirs now. Would you spin it as, hey, we just have some nice new neighbors that are closer to us? No, you would say we have to do something to stop this. We have to protect our sovereignty, our territory. But when it comes to climate change, he's like, oh, actually, it's positive. He's just so fucking stupid and unserious. But of course, he's saying this because he wants to drill baby drill, as he said multiple times, including during this interview. And what we should be doing currently, obviously, is transitioning from clean, renewable technology and getting off of fossil fuels. But he wants to do the opposite. Now, Elon Musk, being the electric car guy, you'd think might have something to say about that. Maybe have a little bit of pushback there, just a tiny bit. But apparently not, because he didn't seem too concerned with Trump's shameless climate denialism in the year 2024 ridiculous but it gets even worse because in this next portion you know he might actually have gotten the two of them in trouble and i say this because trump was praising elon musk for his abusive labor practices and i'll tell you why that's a no-no in a moment but first just listen to these elitist pricks laugh about the way that elon musk treated workers i mean i look at what you do you walk in and you just say you want to quit? They go <laughs> yeah. on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay. You're all gone. You're all gone. So every one of you is gone and you are the greatest. You would be very good. Oh, you would love it. Trump was laughing about the richest man on the planet firing striking workers who were demanding better pay and better working conditions. If you're a Trump supporter, this is what he thinks of you. He thinks it's funny that you peasants would dare ask for a little bit more from your rich bosses. It's horrible from an optic standpoint. It's horrible policy-wise, politically. But on top of that, he might have violated labor laws because, as Jake Johnson of Common Dreams explains, quote, the United Auto Workers announced Tuesday that it filed federal labor charges against Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump and billionaire Elon Musk after the former president heaped praise on the world's richest man for firing striking workers. The UAW argued Tuesday that Trump and Musk's remarks during the conversation, which was viewed live by more than a million people, amounted to illegal attempts to threaten and intimidate workers who stand up for themselves by engaging in protected concerted activities such as strikes. Under federal law, workers cannot be fired for going on strike, and threatening to do so is illegal under the National Labor Relations Act, the union said. Sean Fain, the UAW's president, said in a statement Tuesday that when we say Donald Trump is a scab, this is what we mean. Sean Fan is exactly right, and he also added that these two idiots just want workers to sit down, shut up, and accept the crumbs that their bosses are willing to give them, and they're laughing about that. They're laughing about how greedy they are and how little they respect workers. They can't hide the contempt that they have for working class people, even when they know lots of people are listening to them speak. 
But I do want to move on to the uh, post-interview cope from both Elon Musk and Donald Trump, because on the subject of how many people were listening to them speak, well, of course, it was a huge success according to them. And Elon Musk tweeted that the combined views of the interview totaled around 1 billion. Listen, Elon, if you're going to exaggerate, you should maybe try not to be too outrageous. So that way, what you're saying is actually at least a little bit believable. I would imagine that this was a widely viewed event. Perhaps it got millions of views, but did it get a billion views or around a billion views? No, not a fucking chance. You're seriously telling me that one in eight human beings on the planet tuned in for a two and a half hour long audio only interview with Donald Trump and Elon Musk? Really? You expect us to believe that? I'm sorry. That is complete bullshit. And I don't know what metrics he's using to get to that number, but I will say that the numbers on Twitter are completely unreliable. And I say this as a live streamer myself. So the views that we get on every live stream tend to go up and down. But once we started streaming the leftist mafia to Twitter every Thursday, we noticed that the views were getting con conspicuously higher. Like they keep going up, which is weird because they usually start low and then they go high. They peak at a certain point and then they go down towards the end of the stream. But once we started streaming on Twitter, they just always go up and they never go down. And we realized that Twitter was probably counting people who tune in momentarily as a permanent viewer, which is not what any other platform does because that's unreliable. We're not getting an accurate count of the people watching our show, which explains why, you know, the views just kept going up in perpetuity, even though that's not how any live stream works. They always go down towards the end of the night. Now, Elon Musk probably does this to encourage people to use Twitter. But even with this skewed system and fake numbers, I'm telling you, there's a 0% chance, even with the skewed fake numbers, that this interview even came close to a billion views or a billion impressions. At best, at the very, very best, maybe they got around five to seven million views. That's being really charitable. But if I had to guess, I'd say probably around two to three million views in total. But we don't know. Either way, Elon Musk feels compelled to hype up this interview after there were so many technical dif difficulties and he initially face planted in the beginning, which uh, RNC co-chair Laura Trump, by the way, blamed on the deep state. So uh, maybe they were the ones doing the DDoS attack. I'm not sure. But Elon Musk decided to post his L on his own timeline for some reason by sharing an image of multiple news outlets shitting on the interview that he did for a number of reasons. And Elon Musk put out this cope tweet in response saying, a wall of negative headlines was so predictable. They're such NPCs. All the this does is drive even more people to listen to the conversation themselves and realize how much the legacy media lies to them. Sure thing, buddy. Now, Trump's campaign spokesperson clearly had his feelings hurt following the statement that Kamala HQ put out, which reads, Donald Trump's extremism and dangerous Project 2025 agenda is a feature, not a glitch of his campaign, which was on full display for those unlucky enough to listen in tonight during whatever that was on X.com. Trump's entire campaign is in service of people like Elon Musk and himself, self-obsessed rich guys who will sell out the middle class and who cannot run a live stream in the year 2024. Now, as you can see, Stephen Chung wrote in response, all these statements, yet nobody ever puts their name on them. Fucking cowards. But as you can also see, they literally put their name on it. Harris Waltz. So what are you talking about? I get that you're mad because it was a really good statement and they burned you and hurt your feelings, but they put their names on it. It's not some anonymous statement from a campaign staffer. They're saying this is what we say. Signed Harris Waltz. They put their logo at the bottom. It's from the campaign. So... That's just a very unhinged response. Now, I do want to get to Trump because he was also very peeved by everybody shitting on the interview, and he took to Truth Social to whine about it, writing, I spent two and a half hours last night talking to Elon, a fantastic guy, getting all-time record views and hits, and all the fake news wants to report is that the service crashed because of the tremendous volume, and the show opened a little late. What they should be reporting was the incredible number of people that were listening. I absolutely hate the fake news media. So bad for our country. Now, he also shared Elon Musk's claim that a billion people were listening, saying, an all-time record, but the media refuses to write about it because they are the fake news. Maybe they're not talking about the record-breaking number because they all know that that number is complete fucking bullshit. But listen, back when DeSantis launched his campaign on Twitter, the media was saying the same thing. They were reporting about how it was a technological disaster. And do you want to know what Donald Trump was doing at the same time? The same exact thing as we're all doing shitting on it. He wrote, wow, the DeSanctus Twitter launch is a disaster. His whole campaign will be a disaster. Watch. <laughs> 
What a shame. Joining the fake news media to shit on Elon Musk's interview with Ron DeSantis. And I don't know if you noticed, but he was dead naming X in capital letters, mind you. Very, very disrespectful, Don. But one thing that he was right about is how disastrous DeSantis' campaign was because it was a disaster and the launch was a disaster as well, thanks to Elon Musk, who couldn't competently host an interview because Twitter obviously couldn't handle that much traffic. But I mean, if you knew it was a disaster and you had a little bit of experience seeing how this goes in the past, why would you agree to this knowing that you could also be a laughingstock? He agreed to it. But now he's mad that the fake news media isn't giving this interview the respect that it deserved. I mean, it's just an interview. It's an unnecessarily long, meandering interview where you talk over Elon Musk and you say the same shit that you've been saying for the past four years, right? But the reason why he did it is because Elon Musk is a donor. And like all corrupt politicians, Trump is happily doing exactly what his donors ask of him. But regardless of how you know they want to spin it, This interview was an unmitigated disaster, predictably so. Everyone can see it, and no amount of coping and seething from these two dipshits is going to change our perception of it. 